suppose we've got three charges. I did put them in a triangular shape, a 20 and a 30 kind of down low, and then a five existing kind of straight above the 20 there. If we're asked to find the force exerted on one of them because of the other two, we can't just jump in and find that in one step. What we'll have to do is we'll have to do it kind of in, in order, uh, figure out how hard 30 is pulling on the five, and then figure out how hard the 20 is pushing on the five and add those two up as vectors. Uh, if we start uh, just kind of looking at the geometry of it uh, from Pythagorean theorem, the distance between the 30 and the five is convert to meters. Uh, the R squared ends up being 0 0.045. Uh, looking ahead, I need R squared in my force equation, so I'm not even going to bother square rooting it. I'll just leave that as R squared. And I can tell just by looking at it that this is going to be a 45 degree angle down here. So get those two numbers first and then start crunching. Well, not that we had to do it first, but those two numbers jumped out at me. Now I'm just going to start crunching it out. If I stick with the force of the 30 on the 5, force is always kqq over r squared. It's a vector. Uh, crunching out the equation to get the number, uh, k is always 9 times 10 to the 9. q in this case was negative 30, but we don't need to put the negative in here. I'm going to use my brain to figure out the direction. Uh, the other charge was 5. They were both in micros, so those are 10 to the negative 6. And the distance is that r squared I just calculated. Uh, from Pythagorean theorem, the r squared was 0 0.045, so I can just put that 0 0.045 in here directly. I didn't square root it, so I don't have to square it once I put it in here. Uh, calculator work. That gives me a force of a nice, clean 30 newtons. Now, using my brain... Um, it's an attractive force because the 5 is positive and the 30 is negative. So it's going to be attractive. The 5 is going to get pulled down on that 45 degree angle. So just I'm just going to draw it as an arrow for now. And I'll know that it's on a 45 degree angle when I deal with it later. Switching to the 20 microcoulomb charge. It's going to put a force on the 5. We're going to get the magnitude of the force by using the equation. And then we'll use our brain to figure out the direction. K is 9 times 10 to the 9. This time it was a 20 microcoulomb charge acting on the 5. The R was given as 0.15, and we have to square it. Doing the math on that, we get a nice, clean 40 newtons. Looking back at the picture, the 5 is going to repel away from the 20. So that force on the 5 is pointing away from the 20, or if I use my arrow ID again, it's pointed straight up. So I use my force equation to get the two numbers, use my brain to get the two directions. The last step is I need to add those two forces. So uh, it doesn't really matter what order we draw them in. Uh, the way my brain sees it, though, I'm going to write draw the 40 first. So I've got a force of 40 pushing the 5 that way, and a force of 30 pulling a 5 on the 45 degree angle back that way. There is a force between the 20 and the negative 30. They're attracted towards each other, but the way this question is worded, I'm curious about what's happening to the 5. I don't really care what's happening to the 20 and the 30 between the two. I'm just going to focus on the force that the 30 put on the 5 and the 20 put on the 5, and then add those up. Um, so drawing the 40, so always to add vectors, draw the first one, where it ends, draw the second one, then connect the very, very starting point to our ending point. That's going to be the force, and that's a vector. We'll have to get the angle to clarify the direction. Solving triangles, even doing this since grade 10 math, this one, we know two sides and the angle between them, so I'm going to jump into cosine law. Um, oops, I didn't label it. This is our 45. We could maybe do something with components, but uh, I'm going to do cosine law this time. 40 squared plus 30 squared. It starts off looking like Pythagorean theorem. Then we have to take away that correction. 240, 30. 
cosine the angle between them, which in this case was 45. Crunch all that out, and I get a force of the number I get is 35.2. Now that we've got that, we can switch to sine law. We now know a side and the opposite angle. Uh, I'm curious about what I call theta, so sine theta over 30 is, I now know that opposite the 45 is 35.2. Crunching all that out, I get a theta of 37 degrees. The question wasn't really given in with norths and souths, um, so I'm not sure how to communicate this final answer. But we could say it's 35.2 newtons. Um, we could say north 37 degrees towards the east, that would make sense. Or because it didn't really give norths and souths, we could just say 37 degrees as shown. Um, as long as you've got the angle and sort of communicated it, I'm not too particular as to how you communicate it. North and then east is just fine as well. Bottom line is when we need to find the force on one object because of two other charges, we have to find the 